we are so blessed to have four biographies of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and each of them have their own special features. I'd just like to take a few moments to talk about some of the special features, seven of them in fact, of John's Gospel. Firstly, did you know that John's Gospel is 92% unique material? That's right. If we've read through Matthew, Mark and Luke and we get to John, we're not just getting a rerun of what we've already read. There is so much material that is original to John. For example, Jesus turning the water into wine, that's only found in John's Gospel. The, the deeply impacting conversations between Jesus and Nicodemus and Jesus and the woman at the well is only found in John's Gospel. The healing of the uh, lame man by the pool, the famous foot washing incident, and the longest recorded prayer of Jesus anywhere in the Bible is found in John chapter 17. Then in John chapter 21, Jesus gives a great catch of fish to the disciples after his resurrection and restores Peter. These things are only found in John's Gospel. Even the way that John starts is unique. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There's no genealogy, there's no angel appearing to Mary or, or baby in the manger. These things are wonderful, and they're in the other Gospels, particularly uh, Matthew and Luke. But John has a different purpose, and he starts with a theological introduction. The second thing is that John's Gospel contains the seven great I Am statements of Jesus, where Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. And I am the true vine. The famous seven great I am statements of Jesus. Actually, there's, there really is an eighth one because Jesus said in John 8 verse 58, before Abraham was I am. He simply just called himself I am and that was a very controversial statement. So these things, this is only found in John's Gospel. Thirdly, John's Gospel has different locations. There are some similarities, but the other Gospels have a lot happening up in the north, in Galilee, whereas John's Gospel is set largely in the south, in Judea, and much of the second half of the Gospel is spent in Jerusalem. So that's unique also. Next, did you know that there are teachings about the Holy Spirit that are only found in John 14 to 16? Yes, there are wonderful teachings about the Spirit and, and His work in the life of the believer and so on that we don't find anywhere else in the New Testament, but they're named by Jesus and there's great promises about the Holy Spirit and that is in John 14 to 16. The next, did you know that the word Father occurs around 120 times in John's Gospel, more than any other New Testament book? So there's a big emphasis there that Jesus was conscious of being sent down by the Father He's the son of the father. He submits to the father. He does the father's will. He glorifies the father. And then he returns to the father. And he says to the disciples, as the father sent me, I send you. So there's a lot of emphasis on the father-son relationship in John's gospel. Number six, there's no parables in John's gospel. There are some figures of speech, but we don't find the parables, the parable of the sower, the parable of the dragnet, the parable of the prodigal son and so on. That's because John has a different purpose. Matthew is, is saying, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like, and he tells a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like, and he tells a parable. But in John's gospel, there's no parables because his focus is not so much on the kingdom of God, but more on the son of God and eternal life coming through him. And number seven, the word believe occurs 98 times in John's gospel. Of the 240 times, that the word believe is used in the New Testament, about 40% of these are in John. For example, John 6 verse 21, 29, Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So some wonderful things in John's gospel. It really is a tremendous read. And anyone watching this who's not a Christian, I encourage you to get the gospel of John. Read the gospel of John in the New Testament and just look for Jesus, see Jesus and be changed by Jesus.